Hi everyone, Ben with Dream Factory here. In this short video, I am going to cover the basics of Dream Factory, show you how to get started, and point you to some resources where you can learn more. So Dream Factory Overview, Dream Factory is a REST API platform. It's an open source product, Apache license. You install it on a server, uh, in the cloud, on your laptop, and it eliminates a bunch of the server-side coding that you would normally have to do if you're writing a mobile application, a web app, or Internet of Things. Uh, use case. It instantly generates APIs, so you don't have to write code to actually build your own APIs. Provides server-side scripting for customization of API endpoints in a very simple, easy-to-use way. And it provides tons of security features to protect the API endpoints with things like role-based access control and user management and a bunch of other features. So uh, today we're going to really cover the basics of how to get started with the admin console and then show you where you can learn more uh, detailed from either video tutorials or the documentation. So we assume here that you've installed Dream Factory, you've uh, logged in as an administrator, and you're ready to get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is check out the Home tab. This has a bunch of links to tutorials, docs, uh, community forum, a bunch of things there. There's also a quick start, and this is really useful for just seeing an application in action. We provide an example application. You can click on all click on any of these links to go to the GitHub repository. And you can also import these applications to see how they work end to end. This is a great way of just doing a hands-on tutorial to learn. Uh, various links to resources are here. And then download options exist here. So if you've gone to our website and signed up, you're running in our free sandbox environment, which is hosted by Dream Factory. This is for prototyping and playing around with it. It's not for production. So we encourage you to go to uh, either Bitnami or if you're using Docker, there are a bunch of links here where you can actually install the open source product Dream Factory on your own server, your own cloud environment. So these links provide that. So the first concept here is app. So Dream Factory lets you really run as many applications as you want. Each application is represented by an API key. And to create an application, it's very easy. You can just give it a name, description. And an application can really be anything from a mobile application where it's actually running on a remote device. It could be provisioned on file storage. It could be running on this web server. Dream Factory is essentially a LAMP stack, so it has its own file system. Uh, or it could be on a remote URL. So you figure out uh, what type of application it is, and you can have many, many applications here. You can also import these example applications that I mentioned. So just select these and import them, and that's a good way to get, actually get started and see a real application in action. The next thing, I'm not actually going to go in order here. I'm going to cover <clears throat> how you would actually start building an application. So the next concept is probably the most important. That is the idea of services, and we call services basically synonymous with APIs. And so here is a list of services that are in my own Dream Factory environment. It lists all of the services here. And a service you create is very easy. So Dream Factory provides out of the gate a ton of different automatically generated REST APIs for just about every major database, covering everything from SQL to NoSQL, and Dream Factory securely stores your credentials to that database, automatically generates an API, and inherits the security permissions of the credentials that you put in. So that is really, really key for any application that relies on data that's stored in a database. File systems are supported with S3, Azure Blob, and some others. This generates auto-generates APIs for file systems. Email is the same, so you can automatically get a REST API for various email services, including obviously SMTP. Notification services such as Apple, AWS, and GCM. Remote services, if you need to hook in a remote API, say you have your existing REST API that you want to use, you can connect it via HTTP by putting credentials in, very easy. Scripting we'll cover later, but this concept is if you want to or need to write a custom API, one say that Dream Factory doesn't auto-generate, you can easily script that, basically write your own API and document it with Swagger. And we have some videos that show all of this in action, so I won't cover too many of the details. OAuth is supported, uh, various OAuth providers. LDAP, Active Directory and Standard LDAP. Caching, so local cache, memcache, and Redis. Logging, or logging API calls to Logstash, and single sign-on with SAML 2.0. So I will mention that most of these APIs are open source. Uh, not all of them are, though. So if you go to database, for example, and uh, click on Oracle, if you haven't licensed either our silver or gold product, it will 
prompt you to uh, contact us to get a license key for that. But most of these are open source and they just work. And um, that's all there is to it, to connect. The next thing is once you've connected to your service, say it's a database, you have API docs that are automatically generated for you. And this is really key. This is for uh, uh, interacting with the API, making live API calls. The APIs are documented with uh, Swagger version 2.0, and you can break up, open any of these. Dream Factory auto-generates these endpoints, so it wasn't um, <clears throat> developed manually in any way by developer. In my case, I just connected to this database, and now I can make API calls. Making API calls is very easy. Uh, we have videos that show you a lot of the details, but the concept is you simply put in, say, the name of the table that you want, and then you have various uh, parameters that are appended to the URI when you make the request. So things like filter strings, limits, foreign key relationships, offset, sort order, uh, all of that. So I'll just make a very simple call, limit to 20 records or something. You'll see how this works. And I'm going to connect to a live database. You'll see the uh, curl request here, the API key for this particular API call, the header, uh, and that kind of thing. The request URL is very simple. You can see it's structured here, contact table, and then a question mark with the parameter limit 20. And these are appended depending on what parameters you put in. And then it re returns a JSON response body with the 200 uh, response code. So that's how it works. And you can break open any of these API calls. So whatever you did in your service, it could be, say, a NoSQL database like Cassandra, auto-generated. It could be a custom API where we uh, coded some logic and put a swagger definition behind it. It could be things like uh, files from the native file system, things like Twilio, for example, which is a remote web service that we connected here. Uh, everything shows up there, and it's ready to use. So that's API docs in a nutshell. Uh, you can expose these API docs to non-administrators as well, and the role system lets you do that. We'll cover that in a little bit. So if you need to expose your API docs to external partners or to third-party developers, that's easy to do and easy to secure. The next thing I'll show is scripting real quickly. Uh, the idea of scripting is all of the APIs, the services that we show, have endpoints. And on those endpoints, in either direction, either on the request or the response, you can implement business logic. So you can basically navigate the hierarchy of the REST API tree. And here I'll look at some simple calls. So the DB is the API name, underscore table. Contact is the object or the table name. The verb is post, and then there's a pre-process and a post-process. And in the pre-process, this is where the request to the API call, <clears throat> when the request of the API call is made, it can be intercepted, and you can uh, inject business logic here, for example, a field validation on the request. And likewise, on the response, you can uh, do something when an API call comes back. For In this simple example, we will push a... Uh, push notification using Amazon SNS to an endpoint platform.api.post and SNS is an API that's in the Dream Factory context. Uh, so that's how scripts work. As I mentioned before, you can also write custom scripts. So we call these event scripts. So they're kind of like webhooks and they work on endpoints. Custom scripts you write from scratch and you do that in the services tab. So that's scripts in a nutshell. Next thing quickly is roles. You can have as many roles as you want. You can think of roles as basically the things that govern uh, access control to the various API endpoints. And here I'll actually go and look at uh, one that shows access to the database, which is the API that I showed before. So here we have a role, and we want to grant specific access to certain tables on the DB service. So we can <clears throat> pick which endpoints we want to select. Here it's a particular table. You can pick which HTTP verbs that you want to expose. And that's really easy here with the access. And then you can also decide whether you want the API and or the script to be accessible. So you remember you saw a script on those endpoints. I could say only expose the script. So when that endpoint is hit, run the script. I can also give actual API access, which grants access to the endpoint uh, as well. And, and so that's how you control access to any of the endpoints. You can also do things like record level access control. So here I'm going to say that only the owner field. Uh, I want to make sure that only the user ID that's authenticated can access the owner field. So for example, I cannot see other people's records and vice versa. And you can intersect your union uh, <clears throat> logically any table that way. So that's quickly how roles work. Uh, the next thing I'll cover 
is admins. I'll cover the other tabs pretty quickly. You can have as many admins as you want. Here, I'm the admin. I can add other admins who can log in and do all of the things here. You also have users. So users are basically end users. You can self-register users from your application. Uh, it's worth mentioning that everything in the user interface here is itself a REST API call. You can also add users via the, the user interface. So you can tightly control uh, who is granted access with roles and with users. The next thing I'll cover is schema. So any of the databases that you connect to uh, are accessible here. So here I can look at the contact table and the various fields here. You can add, remove fields, etc. Uh, this is just a convenient way to do that. You can obviously do it in your database as well. Data is similar to schema in that you can see the actual records of the data and you can set that service and do CRUD operations on data that's in your database. Another convenience measure. Files, so all of the files that are in the system including logs uh, are here. So I imported this uh, sample application, which is an AngularJS app that's actually hosted on the server here. So the actual application and all the files in here are hosted. They could also be hosted somewhere else, and you can enable cores access whitelist IP addresses if you want to do that as well. And we'll show a little bit of that in the config tab, which is actually next. So in the config tab, you have a bunch of uh, configuration options. It shows you all of the details around the system info. Uh, you can clear the cache, uh, which basically if you add tables, things like that um, to your database, you'll want to clear the cache because DreamFactor actually caches the metadata to make the API calls really fast. Cores access, you can basically whitelist uh, IP addresses, use star if you're doing development. And then there's some various other things like email templates, global lookup keys, which are more advanced features, which we get into in some of our videos and, and the docs, and things like preferences are, are here as well. Uh, the last thing, or actually two more things to cover, one is packages. So the idea of a package, I'll just cover quickly. You can import and export packages. So packages are basically all of the configuration that you've done in Dream Factory. You may want to zip up as a file and move to a different instance. So say that you're on a development box, you've done some work, and you want to move that to a, another, uh, say, a test server. You can and bundle it up as a package and then either use the REST API to push it to a different Dream Factory server or import it on that Dream Factory server via the import package feature here. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. You can pick out anything, the roles, the services, whatever you need, and easily export it out. The last thing I'll cover is limits. This is You will not see this if you haven't licensed our gold product, uh, so disregard if you're just using open source. Uh, but what limits is, is the ability to set API limits. These are rate limits at various levels. The whole instance, particular users, particular services, particular roles. And what this does is it enforces and it limits the number of API calls that can happen over a certain period of time. So in this example here, we're saying only allow 1,000 or 100,000 rather API calls per hour and start counting those. And if API calls exceed that limit, then they will be throttled and basically rejected until the limit is, um, uh, until API calls are back again under the limit before. So that's a quick overview of Dream Factory. Has a ton of features. It really automates a ton of your server side development, makes it much, much easier. I want to point out a couple uh, things worth checking out to get into more details. If you go to wiki.dreamfactory.com, a bunch of documentation here, including uh, some videos, so how-to videos that go into a lot more detail around each of the tabs and show some basic use cases on how to uh, set up and configure. There's a lot to cover in a starting video, so you'll want to check out those for more details. Um, and then lastly, go to dreamfactory.com to learn more about uh, features, uh, some of the case studies we have, and then products. And here, this is a product matrix, so you can see what's available uh, with the open source product versus our silver and gold product. As I said, most of the features are in the open source product, but you get additional APIs with silver, and then you get API management, which includes things like API limits, API logging, <clears throat> and API reporting with the gold product. So I hope this is helpful to everyone, uh, and check out our website, www.dreamfactor.com, and thanks for watching.